this is why you need a monitor riser. It's a game changer. It really, really is. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. Here is a Netgear 8-port gigabit Ethernet switch. Ideal for home networks. Yeah, that's all I need because that's what I have. Yeah, we're doing another very quick network upgrade. The video, of course, begs otherwise. But, uh, yeah, basically what happened was almost a year ago, April 1st of 2020, I had gotten this uh, desk and swapped out the old one that was here for this. And prior to that, the switch I had here well, just take a look at the clip from the original video. Uh, network switch was also an interesting thing that's sitting back there buzzing away every now and again doing its thing. This is only a five port but it was handy. This is my spare switch. My original switch was this D-Link DSS8 Plus and it worked great. It's an eight port metal nice you can wall mount it if you want and you know it has a, an uplink port and all kinds of great stuff and it was a perfect switch it worked very very well and it shit the bed one day there was just no fucking connection and i have no idea why and everything in this box was extra junk that was laying around on uh the, the desk or around it or something like that so there will be an upcoming video sometime testing this thing because it's been taken out of service since it crapped out. Uh, if it still doesn't work, we'll open it up, take a look, measure voltage. I had that problem before. It looks like it runs on 5 volts, so that can't be too bad. Um, so that'll be for a future video. Well, that video on that D-Link switch never happened yet. Uh, I have not forgotten about it, and I definitely want to take a look, see what in the hell happened to that thing. But in the meantime, it's turning spring here, and XJO81X has gotten this Italian bug up his ass, so uh, he has to do everything, because he's been cooped up for the winter for so long. Uh, he's going to be moving some stuff around and needs to, quote-unquote, split an Ethernet cable. And being that there is already a router in place, such as I have, you need an Ethernet switch. Now, when my original D-Link switch died, I went looking quick on Amazon to, to find one, and I was appalled at what happened to switches. Let's open this thing up so I can better explain. So, in the box, we get a China review. Power adapter, 5 volts bar barrel connector, your installation guide, and your guide to installation. And here is the switch. In a bag. Uh, we'll open that up. Put that aside. Get rid of that. So here is the new switch. Now... The problem I had is that most switches changed and looked like this. And that's all you got. Just your ports, and they put little link lights and shit there. A lot of them don't even have a power adapter, so that requires power over Ethernet. And the Amazon listings really don't make that clear. So the average big, fat, dumb American consumer is going to buy it and be disappointed that it doesn't work because their network is not equipped with PoE. Uh, I always prefer powered switches. Yeah, I know it's got its own power adapter in that, but I, I, I couldn't understand why you would want a switch that has just your ports with lights on them and the front of it would be completely blank. Nothing there, just a box with cables coming out. So if you want to see the lights, the cables are coming out at you. Not good. Or you can turn the box around and just have a box there with nothing. 
So being that XJO81X needed a switch, I said, you know, that Linksys I have has been in service and shouldn't be because it's my spare. So I think as long as I'm looking for a switch, I'll look for one for me too. And I found this, which is of the classic design, where you have your, obviously this is eight ports, so you have your eight ports there, your power connector, and the front has fucking blinking lights, just the way it should be. This way you can set it on a desk or wherever, and you got your blinking lights, the cables go out the back and run off to wherever they need to, and that's that. The one thing I don't like about this switch, but it's not really a deal breaker or a big deal. Why the fuck does it have a power switch? Why would you want to turn that off and disconnect seven devices in one shot? That is retarded. The good news is it's a heavy click, so it's not likely to accidentally be moved or hit or shut off by any means. So now it's finally time for me to replace that Linksys 5 port switch, which was my spare, with this Netgear. Remember the O Brother printer? Or all in one? O Brother. I put this thing here. It has been absolutely nothing but problems. From day one, I put it here. I must have wasted 50 sheets of paper every time I needed to print something it was six tries for it to fucking feed straight in all the testing I did it worked but I have no idea why when I went to put it in service it died I got pissed at the fucking thing I dropped it from like three feet and the screen in there, the little display that you couldn't read anyway, right in that blue thing, fell out, and it's somewhere in there. And then the printer started emanating Chinamatronic smells. I was going up the stairs one day, and I said, uh-oh, what the fuck is burning up? And I went all over, and this is where I found it. So it's been turned off and disconnected. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll give it one more test another time. If I can't make it work, then I'm going to get rid of it because it's totally useless to me. The problem with the network switch is this damn thing. <laughs> what I mean is I used to have the network switch sitting on top of the subwoofer, which is down behind the toner cartridges, which is kind of a shame that I have to get rid of the printer, but what are you going to do? So it's kind of like down in the abyss there. Yes? Can I help you? No? Okay. That's it right there. I can't even see the damn blinking lights, but I still do not want one of those newfangled switches without any blinking lights, because that's just stupid. So basically, I'm going to get in there and replace it. Oh, here. It's good now. The printer works. There we are. Beautiful. Everything has linked the way it's supposed to. And the network is negotiating whatever it needs to negotiate. And I got my blinking lights. So I just got to pull the rest of the wire out of the old one. And that will do that. So with the new switch in service, this old Linksys, oh, what does that even say? Well, there's the model number. I can't read it. <laughs> uh, it used to have rubber feet on this side. Etherfast 10100 five port workgroup hub. This is a hub, not even a switch. Oh, no shit. I thought this was a switch. Well, I mean, it'll work the same. It's just not as efficient as a switch. But uh, this thing is so old that it has a separate uplink port over here. 
it's not auto MDI MDIX so it can't automatically detect a crossover cable and correct that if it is incorrect so you had to put your uplink in there and then wire the rest in if you were using a crossover you'd use the uplink if you were using a straight cable you'd use the one port or maybe which way around I don't even remember anymore it doesn't make a difference I didn't pay attention when I disconnected it but one or the other will work not both and you don't get six ports even though it looks like it has six but uh, yeah this was my spare and it's been in service for way too long so thanks to XJO81X I finally got the uh, the cheap out of my ass and bought a new switch and remember that new one, that Netgear one, is gigabit. Wow. Not that it matters any because it's everything else is 100 megabits per second, so it's not seeing gigabit. One thing that I don't like about the new switch is, see, the old ones here has link activity and 100. So if you connected a 10 megabit per second line to this, you would not get the 100 light lit up, but you'd get the link activity to light up. If you plugged in a 100 megabit per second connection, then you'd get both lit up, and that's what I had, so they were both lit up. But yeah, they even dumbed down the blinking lights, but hey, at least there are blinking lights instead of the stupid new design. So yeah, this thing has been around. I got it from a client that I did work for many years ago. It's got paint on it, you know, it's just been around forever, but it was certainly a great spare and filled in for, uh, fuck, way too long. I don't know, a couple of years now? I, I don't remember when that thing died, but we will definitely in the future be taking a look at that old D-Link switch to see what went wrong or if it just shined it out for a day and it magically will start working again. I don't know, but this is my spare. It'll go back to being my spare, and I'll put it back where it belongs. So that way, if I ever need it, I know where to find it. That's going to do it for this quick network upgrade. Um, someday in the future, like I said, we'll take a look at that. And I also have a bunch of other old Linksys devices um, that we can fart around with, including that old Wireless G access point that I took out of service in the wireless network upgrade series. So that's going to do it for this. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.